Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. Today I'm going to help you set up your Ambernic RG556 and we'll go through setting up emulators, setting up your ROMs and your front end, basically everything that you want to know about setting up an Ambernic RG556, I'll go through it. First thing that you want to note is if you purchased the 556 with an SD card edition, so you bought it with games or ROMs, it looks like this. And you can already tell there is no branding on here. It's not SanDisk, it's not Samsung, it's not Kioxia. It is, we don't know who makes this, we don't know who made it. If you're new to this hobby, there is a lot of issues with SD cards. And mainly, they're prone to failure if you buy any device with ROMs or games. The SD card is prone to failure, and the ROMs on top of it, are actually low quality ROMs. So you'll run into issues a lot of times with Pokemon and Pokemon won't save. And then you'll go see Reddit and you'll see Discord and there'll be a lot of people asking, why isn't my Pokemon saving? Well, the answer is because you bought the SD card with the ROMs and is a bad time. Long story short, I'm gonna show you both ways. I'm gonna show you if you actually do wanna use this card, then I'll show you what to do and I mean, God be with you, hopefully everything works. But I'm gonna show you how to do it for most people and that's where we have our own ROMs that we've curated, we've gotten from other sources that are actual sources. And so usually when a device like this arrives, all I do is pop in my SD card with my ROMs installed and I'm off to the races, I'm good to go. But if you want to use this card, if you're somebody who doesn't have the time to go and find different ROMs and you don't care if some of your games don't save and all of that sort of thing, then I'll show you what to do. So let's just go right ahead. You're going to pop this SD card in if you got one. So the proper way to put in the SD card for here is you want to put it face side up and then just slide it in and you can use your finger to just close it up. And let's turn it on. Now I'm going to take you from full setup. I haven't turned this on yet. I haven't done anything with it. So we'll go through the entire setup from the beginning. If you're somebody who doesn't have this device yet and you're like, I want to have my ROMs and everything ready, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. And we'll go on the computer and do that through there because you can format an SD card as XFAT and then fill it up with your ROMs and BIOS files and everything that you need. And then when this arrives, you can just insert it and you're basically ready to go. So let's go through and do that now. Now, since the device only has 128 gigabytes of internal storage, most people are gonna wanna buy an SD card and I would recommend probably at least a 512 gigabyte. I'm using a one terabyte personally, but that's a little bit overkill. I'm gonna leave links in the description either way to SD cards that I recommend. And if you're gonna be setting this all up ahead of time before you get the device, I'll also share a link to an SD card reader so you can put this on your PC and load up all the files ahead of time. Now, what you wanna do is connect your SD card to your PC and let's go ahead and right click it in Windows and click Format. Now format it as XFAT. Choose default allocation size and then rename it to RG556 if you want. The name can be anything. Click Start. Now you have a blank SD card that you can just put into the RG556. But let's go ahead and put your ROMs on it first. Now, for obvious reasons, I can't do the whole here's where ROMs are thing. However, I do show it in a different video, which I'll leave in the description. I don't want anybody asking for ROMs or BIOS files, because if you watch that video, it shows you everything. Once you have some ROMs, come back here and you can just create a folder called ROMs. Inside of that folder, go ahead and create folder names for any systems that you want. The names don't matter. For example, here's N64 for Nintendo 64, GBA for Game Boy Advance, GC for GameCube, and so on. Then inside each folder, put your ROMs and you're done. Super simple. Then when you get your actual device, if you want to transfer ROMs to it without taking out the SD card, you can connect it via USB-C to the PC. Swipe down from the top when you're connected and click charging this device via USB and then select file transfer. And you should hear a little chime on your PC that lets you know that the internal storage and SD card as drives are now connected on your PC and you can transfer files to them. Okay, so the device arrived, you have your SD card either from 
your, your own SD card or the one that came with the device. So let's set it up. Obviously, we're just going to go through the original setup here and just go through normal things. So nothing really to talk about yet. Let this do its thing and then we'll come right back when it's done. All right, so the configuration is done. Go ahead and push A or B. I'm just going to push A. And now we're in Android and it's going to pop up a few things there. We're in Android and this is the Android home screen right now. You can swipe, see what's installed already. And Ambernick themselves has pre-installed emulators. So you can see them all here. There's a whole bunch, Aether SX2 for PS2 and Dolphin for GameCube and Wii and another Dolphin. There's a bunch here. This is where the guide is gonna split off into two different directions. If you're somebody who's using that SD card and you just wanna use this out of the box, you don't wanna do anything else and you're okay with how this looks as it is, then I'm gonna show you how to use it from here. Basic idea, if you scroll down from the top and you go over into game mode, which is that little toggle right there, swipe back in, it's going to load up Ambernix front end. And this is where you can load and launch all of your different games and everything that's loaded on the actual SD card. So you can see it needs to complete some resources. So we're just going to click OK, let it do its thing. And we're going to get into RetroArch. Just click OK and allow. And it's going to bring us right into RetroArch. Let it do its thing on screen. And when it's done, I'm going to go all the way down. And this should say quit RetroArch. We're going to quit using A, or I guess in this case, it's B. And now we're back on this screen. So this is where you launch all of your games from. You can see here, there is a whole bunch of different systems and all of that. If we go into SNES, and I don't know if it's going to be B or A, it's A. If you go into SNES, these are all of the games that are on your SD card right now. So if you bought it from Ambernick, this is everything. And if you want to play one of these games, you can go ahead and just click it and it'll load it and you're off to playing it. Now, another way that you can get to that front end is if you push the little R button in the bottom left, it'll bring it up for you. So da, 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 you're in. Now, if you want, while you're in a game, if you push that button again, it's going to take you back to the Android home screen and push it again, it'll take you back to the front end. This isn't a great way to exit games and I wouldn't suggest it, but if you wanted to, you could do that. The other thing that you can do on this screen here is if you push select, you can get to the emulator settings and you can choose what you want to use to play whatever uh, system you're in. So right now we're in Super Nintendo and it's using the SNES 9X. If you click it, you can see there's a whole bunch of other options. If you want to use RetroArch, for example, then you can scroll down and pick a RetroArch option to use. Otherwise, if you also wanted to go over into game settings on the right, this is where you can select your path. So for example, let's say you have this SD card and you hear that everybody suggests that you should use a branded SD card, which is my suggestion. When you get a branded SD card, that's gonna change. This number here is gonna change. So what you wanna do is come back here and you can delete the path that you had for SNES games on your old card and then just click the plus icon and sort to the new one. So right now I still have that old SD card in, it's not gonna be here, but you could just go in and find wherever your SD card is and select the new path, which would just be storage, the new SD card number is SNES. And that's how you can add it if you have a new SD card and you wanna use Ambernix store and all of that. I'm gonna leave it here. If if you're somebody who wants the out of the box experience, that's that's it. I'm, there's not much else I'm gonna show you here because it sounds like, and if you're this person, you really don't wanna do much more. So have fun, enjoy the Ambernick stock experience and all of that. For everybody else, I'm gonna show you how to set up this device to the best of its ability and the best of what it can do. So what we're gonna do, we're headed back to this main screen here and I am gonna delete literally every single app that I could find because I don't trust Ambernix setup. I don't want Ambernix setup. We're gonna set up every emulator from the start. And so I don't want any of these. So what I'm gonna do is just click and hold on it, app info, and I'm gonna go to uninstall and I'm gonna keep nothing and click okay. And I'm gonna do that for every single app. App info, uninstall, okay. Dolphin, app info, uninstall, okay. And I'm gonna keep doing this. So I'm just gonna fast forward. 
Once again, if you're somebody who wants the out of the box experience, you don't want to be following this part. You're basically done on what I showed. You can go ahead and launch all of your games from there and have some fun. And then if you start to run into issues, you might want to follow the rest of this guide. But otherwise, this is for more advanced users, people that want to get the most out of their device. As far as all these other apps go, you can leave them. They're not really hurting anybody. There is one app that I want to draw attention to, and that's the over the air update app. If you go right here and check version, we can check if there's any over the air updates and I'm not connected to the internet. So let's go ahead and do that first. All right, so we're on the latest version. We have all the apps that we wanted to have gone, gone. There's nothing left except for the built-in apps that you can't really remove anyways. What I'm gonna do is go into files and sure. Okay, so I jumped into the files app and now what I'm gonna do is go over into just browse the internal storage and I just wanna make sure that everything was deleted. So there's a drastic folder here. I don't want that duck station folder. Redream, MMJR, Mupin, PSP, Retroarch. I don't want the RG Launcher, Yabba Use. And I'm going to delete all of those. Delete permanently and delete. And if I scroll down, there is nothing left that isn't what I want. So we're good. Now we can go ahead and change some Android settings. So I'm going to scroll down from the top. And you can see here there's a quick panel, so Bluetooth and all of that sort of thing, the game mode. If you want to do the key mapping, you can turn that on here and that'll let you do key mapping in a game. Auto mode for CPU, just keep that off. The fan, if you want it on, cool, strong, off. I'm going to keep it off. I might just keep it on maybe auto. And if I don't like the sound, I'm just going to put it off. Scroll over to the right. Oops. While we're here, if you go ahead and push and hold on ambient light, you'll get a pop-up that lets you control the LED lights. So if we turn it off, you can turn it off. You can change the brightness. You can make it breathe so it does it lights up and lights off. Or you can do a different version, a medium version of it, or a slow version of the breathing. You have options here. So you can go ahead and play with it and... That's it. I'm going to leave them on and normal on light mode. So NS mode here basically means that it's in um, Nintendo mode for buttons. So if you push A, it's A, B is B. If you swap it and now you're in Xbox mode or the confirm and now A is a cancel. So it depends on what you want to use. Personally, I like to use the Nintendo mode and I'm going to use that. Head over into settings and now we have some settings that we can go ahead and change. Network, obviously connect to your Wi-Fi and nothing else here that you need to do. Head over into battery and I'm going to change and add battery percentage to the top because I want to see what the percentage is. Nothing else. I'm going to leave the rest fine, normal. If we jump into display, I'm going to change the screen timeout to 30 minutes because I don't like having a short timeout. I'm going to turn on dark theme to make my eyes easier. If you go into colors and contrast, you can play around with the contrast here and just how everything looks. So if you change it to increase contrast, it makes things a little bit more contrasty or standard. It all depends on what you want and what your picture, you want the picture to look like. Probably going to leave it on standard. I think that's the best option here. And I'm going to head back. Lastly, I'm going to head into system. I'm going to set my date and time as well while I'm here. So time zone, if your keyboard shows up like this and that's annoying, just drag it down to the bottom and there you go. Okay, so we have a clean slate to work with now. I have no installed, pre-installed apps. I'm going to remove the SD card that was in there. If you want to use that, you can. Again, I outlaid why you shouldn't, but I'm going to remove that. And what I'm going to use is the one from my Odin 2 or the one that I have pre-set up. So I have a pre-set up SD card and I'm gonna bring that over into this. Now, when you insert an SD card that you've previously formatted or even one you haven't, so let's say you followed my instructions at the beginning and you created an XFAT formatted SD card and you put your ROMs on there and all of that. When you scroll down, it's gonna ask you to set it up. 
And it might give you an option to format it as internal storage or to use it as internal storage. Don't do that. You want to use portable storage. And we're set up. So now we don't have to do anything. You can explore that SD card if you wanted to, and we could use the files app and you can see what mine looks like. But I basically just have a ROMs folder. And inside of that, I have a bunch of systems, but these ones are all set up by the front end. Either way, you can just put all of your systems inside of the ROMs folder, like I showed previously. Okay, so let's start off with RetroArch. That'll be the first emulator that we install. And I'm gonna go over to Chrome. And from Chrome, we're gonna type in RetroArch. and just go over to the RetroArch website and we're gonna to go to download, get rid of the pop-up, scroll right down. And here's the Android section here on the right. And you wanna download the one that says 64-bit. And you can download it there, download anyways. And when it's done, just click open. And you're gonna to have to allow unknown sources, which is fine and then install. Then just click open and allow the permissions. So click okay and allow. And now we're inside of RetroArch. And so now we get to set this up the way that we want to. First thing I'm gonna do is go over to online updater and core downloader. And this is where you wanna select the cores for the systems that you wanna play. So in RetroArch, I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna leave the recommended list of ones that I choose on, that I use on my website. So I'll have a link in the description to that, but I'm just gonna scroll down and pick the ones that I wanna use. That was Final Burn Neo for Arcade. And I'm gonna scroll right down to Nintendo. And so for Nintendo, I'm gonna go for Game Boy, Gambate. And then for Game Boy Advance, I'm gonna use MGBA. For NES, I'm gonna use Messin. For SNES, I'm gonna be using S9EX, SNES 9X. For Dreamcast, I'm gonna use the Flycast Core. For Mega Drive and Game Gear and Master System and everything Sega, I'm gonna be using the Genesis Plus GX Core. For Saturn, we're gonna use Beetle Saturn. And then lastly, for PlayStation, we're gonna be using this Swan Station Core. That's it for RetroArch. So we're gonna scroll right back, push B to get out. And now we're headed back to this screen. And if you push right on the D-pad or left on the D-pad, you can get over to the settings screen. And we're gonna go over into user interface and then on-screen display and on-screen overlay and turn off display overlay. That's basically gonna get rid of the on-screen controls in RetroArch because we don't want that. Now head back and back and back again. And this time we're gonna go right into input and I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna turn off confirm quit right there. I don't wanna have to push the confirm quit twice to exit out of a RetroArch game. So that's what I'm gonna turn off. Then we're gonna jump in and we're gonna go over into RetroPad binds and port one controls. And here I'm gonna change analog to digital to left analog. That basically means that any D-pad only games lets you use the left stick as well. So you can use either or in one of those games. And I find that to be better. If you scroll down, you can see a whole bunch of controller mappings on the left and what it's mapped to on the right. Now, I don't know if this is set up correctly out of the box and I don't wanna to have to go and test it. So what I'm gonna do is set this up myself. So just click on each one. So this is D-pad up and I'm gonna push D-pad up. D-pad down, D-pad down, left and right. Now for B button, down. And see it gets stuck here because we mapped the same button twice. So I'm gonna push B and that'll work and push A, and now we fixed it. So now B button and thing. But now they're swapped in RetroArch and we'll fix it. But you'll see in a second what I mean. We're gonna have to use B for the rest of this. So B, Y, B, X, B, where is the select? Select, yep, B, start, L, R, L2, R2, and just keep going through every single one until you're done. 
And you can stop here at write analog. It's a good thing we did this because A and B were swapped. And so now to get out of the screen, push A and scroll, or no, push A again, and then scroll right down. And we want to go to menu controls and push B and then see the swap, OK and cancel. Push B again to do that, and now B will be exit and A will be enter. So we're all good. Everything is right in the world again. Now let's do some hotkeys. So head into hotkeys here, and we want to select a hotkey enable button. And I like to use L3 for this. So L3 is one of the buttons that we're going to need for a hotkey. And if we scroll right down, menu toggle, I'm going to set this to X. And what this means is when I push L3 and X at the same time in a RetroArch game, it's going to pop up with the RetroArch menu. That's exactly what we want. And if I scroll down for quitting, I'm going to put it as start. Pushing L3 and start at the same time is going to quit RetroArch and save our configurations. And that's the right way to quit RetroArch. You never want to quit RetroArch by pushing the home button or anything like that. You want to quit it by pushing the hotkey. Scroll down and you can map other things if you want. So fast forward, I'm going to set to R2 and I'm going to scroll down, rewind as L2 and I'm going to put load state as L1, save state as R1, keep going right down. And there's one more that I like to do and that's show FPS. And I'm going to set that to A. Back out, back out again and scroll right down. And we're going to go into saving. Right now it has it saving into folders by core name. And personally, I don't want this. So I'm going to turn it off. This is personal preference. You don't have to do that. But if we scroll right down, there is an auto save state and auto load state. And what this means is when you boot into RetroArch, if you have auto save state on and auto load state on, when you have auto load state on and you boot into RetroArch, it's going to boot up the last save state that you had. So right into the game and you don't have to worry about anything. Auto save state, when you quit RetroArch, so using the L3 and start that we set up, it's going to save the state and close RetroArch. So you'll have a actual save state whenever it closes and it keeps your progress. So it's a good way of just making things easy and simple to get right into a game and exiting a game and saving at the same time. Personally, I like both of these options and I'm going to keep them. Back out. And if we scroll right down, you're going to see achievements. And this is where you want to log in with your retro achievements if you have them. And I would also suggest disabling hardcore mode if you're going to do it and log in. And that way you can collect some retro achievements. Scroll down again. And if we go into directory, I'm going to show this here. There is a system slash BIOS folder and you need BIOS files for some systems like PlayStation 1 and sometimes Dreamcast, but mostly PlayStation 1. And it's telling you here where to put your BIOS files. So in the storage emulated basically means the internal storage RetroArch system folder is where you want to put your BIOS files. And so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to show you what to do. If we go right back main menu. And I scroll down. First thing we want to do is head to configuration file and save current configuration. If you don't do this, all of the work that we just did in RetroArch is going to mean nothing because if you exit RetroArch without saving, it doesn't save anything. So you're going to have to redo everything we just did. But we just saved it by save current configuration. And now we can quit. Now what I'm going to do is head back and we're going to go into that files app. And I'm going to scroll right over to my SD card, which you can see right there, SD card. And I'm going to go into my ROMs folder. And I personally have a BIOS folder already. So there it is. And I have a PS1 folder and there's my PS1 BIOS. And I'm going to explain for the people that have no idea what I'm doing right now. Don't worry. I'm going to show you what to do, but it says copy to going to go to internal storage, scroll right down, RetroArch, scroll to the system folder that we showed before, and I'm going to say copy here. And basically we just move the BIOS folder to the folder for RetroArch that has BIOS files. Now you're confused at this point. If you've been following me and you don't have BIOS files and you just got ROM somehow else, you need BIOS files. And I'm showing you on screen what that BIOS file name is. And I'm going to leave a video in the description where I talk about BIOS files a little bit more, but either way, you're going to need them. 
And PS1, specifically, you're going to need this one for it to work. And you can just move it to that RetroArch system folder like I just showed you. Backing out, we set up RetroArch, so we're good for now. And we're not going to launch it because we don't need to. We're going to set up a front end later on, and that way you can launch all of your games and have everything ready. So let's just go through some other emulators. The next emulator on my list is Nintendo 64. And so for this one, we're going to have to go to the Play Store and sign in with your Google account. I'm going to search here for M64 Plus. And you can see it there. And there's two options. There's a paid option and a free option. If you're going to be using an SD card for your ROMs, you're going to need the pro option. Otherwise, you can be okay with the free option. There's some ads and all that, but I highly suggest just getting the pro option and paying for it. I think it's a few bucks, but for N64 games, you're going to be wanting to use this. Let's go ahead and open it. And yeah, we want to allow it for notifications. And now we need to search our ROM. So this is basically just telling it where our ROMs are. So I'm going to go select folder and I'm going to go to my SD card, which is called Odin 2 and scroll to ROMs. And then I have an N64 folder somewhere right there. And these are all my ROMs. So I'm going to say, use this folder. And now it's going to search that folder, find all of my ROMs and get artwork and all that fun stuff and then display it. So we're just going to wait for that. Okay, so M64 Plus has found all of my ROMs. They're all here. Let's go over into the settings right at the top. And you can go into display. And from here, you can change the resolution of the game. So right now it's 640 by 480, which is kind of the standard N64 resolution. And if you click that, you can upscale it if you want. Now, what I would do is see if games run first before upscaling this into whatever you want. 1080 or 1440 by 1080 would be the highest for this panel. So don't go higher than that. But if you wanted to set it to that and see if games run, then great. If not, come back here and fix it. Head back and we're going to go over into data. And if I go here and I'm going to explain this for people right now, the saves, any saves that you do, any actual data is going to be on the internal and it's not easily accessible if you want to sync cloud saves or easily get to your saves. So let's do this now before we open any games. Head over here, external, external game data location. And I'm going to go to the internal storage, which is RG556. And I'm going to create a folder. I'm just going to call it M64 plus. Then I'm going to say, use this folder. Now, what that does is anytime we make a save, any information we have in this emulator, all of that, it's all going to start saving in that folder. So if you need to find your saves, they're all right there. It's perfect. Head back. Now we're going to go into profiles. And what we're going to do is go over to controller and we're going to click new and create a profile name. I'm just going to call it RG556 and done and click OK. And now we just need to map our controls for N64. And this is more difficult than you expect it to be, but it's L is L1, R1, Z for R2. I'm gonna put start as start, A, B. And now we get to the C pads and I like to use the right stick to do that. It's not gonna be the best for every game, but at least it's something to get you started. You're most likely gonna need to create profiles for different games, or at least have a few different profiles that you can swap between. I'm just going to create a general profile right now and show you how to do it. If you want to map some of the other hotkeys, you can do so. All of that is here, the back key, the menu key, all of that, but I'm just going to leave it and just going to get out, push B. So there's our profile. If you want to create more, just click new. And now if you scroll back and head into select profiles, and you can see controller one profile, we're gonna change it to RG556. So that's our profile that we just created. And if you click back again and back again, you can see all of our games here. So now that we're on this page, 
If you wanted to create a custom controller profile, let's say for Super Smash Brothers, I'm just gonna use that as an example. I like to have X and Y as the C pad buttons instead of the right stick. And so if I go ahead and create a profile for that, and I put those as the C pad buttons, what you can do is on this page, and I'm gonna pretend that Banjo-Kazooie is Super Smash, just click it and you can scroll right down. And if you go right over here to settings, these are the per game settings. So you can now change the controller profile. If I scroll, where is it? Right there. If I go to controller, controller one profile, right now it's using the global default. So the RG556 profile. But if I had another profile, I can go ahead and click a different one. And that way for this specific game, I'm gonna only use that controller profile. Otherwise, if you boot into a game, so I'm gonna boot into Banjo-Kazooie, the touchscreen controls are going to show up for a few seconds. Don't worry, they disappear if you're using a controller. And otherwise, the game is actually going to start running and everything will be great and you can start playing. When you're ready to exit, push the menu button or the back button on the bottom. You can exit here. You can save state, load state. You can do all a bunch of stuff here. But that's how you exit. Exit out. Okay. And we're done with M64+. Plus. Next up, let's do Melon DS, and I like using Melon DS for Nintendo DS. So I'm going to go over to the Play Store and type in Melon DS. And there it is. Early access, install. You could use Drastic, that's another option. And I'll leave a video where I set up Drastic instead, but I prefer using Melon DS nowadays because it has retro achievements and it's about to have upscaling. So I prefer to just use this. But otherwise, I'm going to click open jump right in and we're going to set our ROM directory as usual. So go over to the SD card and I'm going to go into my ROMs folder and I'm going to go all the way to NDS and use this folder. Now you can see all of my ROMs just went right in and it's loading it. So let it go, especially if you have a lot of ROMs and we're set. Now what you can do also head over to settings. And we're going to go over into the save files folder. And right now, by default, it's going to save all of your saves next to the ROM file, which means in the same directory as the ROM. I don't want that. So I'm going to go click that and I'm going to set a directory for all of my save files. And once again, I'm going to go to my internal storage and create a folder. And I'm just going to call this Melon DS. And use that folder. Now all of my saves are going to save inside of the Melon DS folder. And that's exactly what I want. And even my states are going to do the same thing. So we're set. Back out. And we're going to scroll right down and I'm going to go over into input. And I'm going to turn off show soft input because that's the on-screen controls. We don't want that. So I'm going to get rid of that. And if I go over to key mapping, I can go ahead and set my key mappings for Nintendo DS. So I'm just going to go right through and it's the same as the buttons and you can use left and right on the D-pad for this, but the actual analog stick will still work. L, R, start, select. And if you want to map these other options, you can. Fast forward, I do want as R2 for Pokemon games, especially swap screens. If you want to map it, you could do it as L2. And if there's any other things that you want, otherwise back out. If you want to change the layout you can do that here of the screens and how it looks but i'm going to leave it as default i'm okay with that retro achievements if you want to log in with retro achievements they're right there head right back and if we open a game you can see it's working if i push l2 it's going to swap screens r2 it's going to start fast forwarding but you can't tell because we're on the home screen and it all looks normal but there we go you can see it now if you want to exit again back button in the bottom and you can do some save states and load states and all that, but exit. Perfect. Next up, I want to install Dolphin, and that'll get us GameCube and Wii. So once again, going to head to the Play Store, going to go to the search and type in Dolphin. And you're going to see it here, Dolphin Emulator. Now, mine says Dolphin Emulator Beta. And I'm going to show you why that matters. I'm a beta tester. It says I'm a beta tester, but anybody can be a beta tester. Scroll right down and mine isn't going to show. Oh, there it is. At the bottom, you should have something that says the same thing, but it might say join the beta or join beta, something like that. Join it. You want to be a beta tester. You want to be 
somebody who gets that because when you are, the Dolphin beta emulator is the same version that's being updated basically daily. So you want to be up to date on what Dolphin's doing. If you don't do that, and you're going to use the regular Dolphin from the Play Store, it's like a year old at this point or something like that. So just make sure you join the beta and then come here and install. Now click play. And you can enable usage if you want. From this screen, we're going to add games. And the first thing we're going to do is find our GameCube ROM directory. So ROMs. And I'm going to head over to GameCube because that's where I have it. But mine is called GC. There it is. Use this folder and allow. And now it's going to populate the list with some GameCube games. Perfect. Head over into Wii. And I'm going to do the same thing. Go over to ROMs and jump into the Wii folder. And it's going to load them in. And perfect, we're set. We have GameCube and Wii games already good. Now I'm going to head over to Settings, and we're going to go to Config, General. And I want to enable Cheats, why not? And I also want to scroll down, and I want some save states. Just be careful using save states, it could break some stuff. Let's jump back, and this time we're going to go to Graphic Settings. And this is going to be a tough one. There's OpenGL and there's Vulkan. It's going to kind of be game dependent here. I prefer to just stick with OpenGL where possible because it's more stable than Vulkan is. But each game is going to be different. So you're going to have to swap back between OpenGL and Vulkan. And I'm going to show you how to do it on a per game basis. I would suggest just leaving it as OpenGL for the entire system. Just leave it as default. Go over here, compile shaders before starting. And if we scroll down to enhancements, internal resolution, you can play around with the resolutions here. Depends on the game, what you can get out of it. If you want to do 1x, 2x, 3x. Again, I prefer to have it as 1x as a standard and then doing a per game setting. So we'll show you or I'll show you how to do all that. Otherwise, nothing else that you have to touch here. If you want to show FPS, Head over into statistics and then click show FPS and you can show some frame times and all the other fun stuff that you can take a look at, especially if you're trying to decide on what resolution to use. Otherwise, back out. And now let's map controls for GameCube. So GameCube input, click the little settings icon on the right. And if we scroll down, we just have to map. So for a GameCube controller, A, B, X, Y, Z, I'm going to use R2, start, and just go through. See, I'm glad it did this. Sometimes, when you're mapping GameCube, see how this mapping is different than the rest? It didn't correctly get the right side. So it made it a full access plus access zero. We don't want that, so fix that. Click A and redo it. And now it's proper. I've seen a lot of people have issues with this, so just keep that in mind. That's what you want to do. Scroll down and the right or C stick, we're going to do the same thing. And I bet you it's going to happen again. Oh, this time it didn't. Triggers. And that's it. So now you can scroll all the way back up. And I'm going to fix my Z because I had it as a different button. I don't remember what I put as the Z. I'm just going to power one. Anyways, so we're done with GameCube mapping. We can back out, back out. We're set there. Now we're going to go into Wii. And fair warning here, I absolutely hate the Wii. And I'm going to show you how to map the classic controller. If a game doesn't use a classic controller and uses something else, I can't help you. I hate it. I'm not going to do it. I, I, I hate, hate it. So I'm going to change the extension to classic and then I'm going to click the little settings icon. And now we're going to map the classic controller for Wii. Same sort of buttons here. We don't need a home button. Uh, I'd never use a home button.
And there we go. So what we did was we mapped a classic controller for the Wii, meaning right now, if you were to boot up a game, the only games that will work are the ones that use a classic controller. If you want to map any other buttons for like the nunchuck or other extensions, you're going to have to look elsewhere. I, I cannot help you. I hate the Wii. So we did all of that. We can boot into a game now and it'll load and I'll show you what that looks like. But one thing I want to show you is how to do per game settings. If I push and hold on Animal Crossing, I can go over to edit game settings and any settings I change here are going to be for Animal Crossing only. So if I went into GameCube input and I changed some settings there for Animal Crossing, that's how you would do it. But this matters more for the video backend when you want to change between OpenGL and Vulkan. If you run into a game that runs a lot better on Vulkan than OpenGL, then that's how you would change it. But let's just jump into a game and I'm just going to pick Mario Kart Double Dash. First thing we're going to notice is there's some on-screen controls and there's no way in the settings to change that. So what we have to do, click the back button on the bottom, scroll down, go over to overlay controls and we're going to go to toggle controls and toggle all. And there we go. They are all gone and no more on-screen controls. That back button is how you exit the game. It's how you load state, save state. If you're going to try that, which again, be careful with it. You can change per game settings by the settings screen if you want to do it in the game, all of that. Otherwise, you're pretty much set. And that's it for Dolphin. We're all set up for Dolphin. Next up, we're going to do PPSSPP for PlayStation Portable. Same thing. It's on the Google Play Store. I'm going to type in PPSSPP and search. See it right there. PPSSPP and install and click play. Now on this screen, never click skip. You never want to click that option. This option will allow you to create a PSP folder where all your saves will be, all of your files will be, and you'll have easy access in case you need it. So we're going to leave that as, as what it is and click OK. Now we're on the internal storage, I'm going to create a folder called PP SSPP. You can call it whatever you want. I just makes it easy for me to know what it is and click done. And I'm going to use this folder and click OK. Now we're on the home screen of PPSSPP. Very first thing you want to do is jump over to browse and we're going to go find where the ROMs are. And so mine are on the SD card in my ROMs folder. And there's a PSP folder somewhere right there. Click use this folder and allow. And there's all my PSP games. Now, second thing we're going to do is jump over to settings. Oops. And these are the default settings. It's using Vulkan as a default. You can leave it. Rendering resolution, two times PSP. If you want to use what the device can do, it'll be four times PSP. Once again, might be game dependent. If you run into a game that doesn't run well, then you're going to have to change that. I'm going to leave it as default for now. Head over to controls and turn off on screen touch controls. Get rid of the on screen touch controls. Go over to control mapping and don't know what this looks like. I don't know if this is going to work. So we're going to set it ourselves. Clear all and just go through. And this one, I have to just tap them. Circle is A, B, Y there. Start, select and scroll down. L, R, Analog down. Oops. And now if we scroll down, what else I want to change is I want speed toggle. And I'm going to change that to R2 because that's how I'm going to get fast forward. Otherwise, you can map some other stuff if you want, but don't need to. So I'm going to back out. Other thing that you can do if you go to tools, Retro Achievements, this is where you can sign up for Retro Achievements or sign in with Retro Achievements. And I would prefer or I would suggest turning off Hardcore Mode because you don't want that. Now back out, back out. If we jump into a game, I'm just going to pick the first one. And now we're in a game. As usual, back button gets you the menu. You can save state, load state, create a game config. So if you want to create settings for this specific game only, Right there, create game config, and you can do that. So once you do that, now you can see game settings instead of what it was was just settings. But I don't need that. 
So I'm going to delete it and we're going to exit to menu and we're done with PPSSPP once we exit out of it. Now we come to Nether SX2 or what used to be Aether SX2, so a PS2 emulator. And this one's pretty easy. So what we're going to do is go to Chrome and I'm going to type in Nether SX2 patch. And you're going to see it's the first one there by Trixarian. I'm going to click that. Scroll right down. See releases on the right. We're going to click that. And if we scroll right down, right to resources, there's an APK file here. Go ahead and download that APK file and download anyways. Now scroll up and you see this X Delta file. We're going to download that X Delta and it's downloaded. Next, head over to the Play Store. And what we're going to install is a program called Unipatcher. And you see it right there, Unipatcher and install. Now open it and allow notifications. Sure, why not? And now we want to select our patch file. So the patch file is the X Delta file. So you'll see it right there. Just click X Delta. For the ROM file, it's the APK file. So right there. And then the output file where you want to save it, click that. And we're in the downloads folder. And I think we're in the internal storage. Yep. So I'm just going to click save and click the little save icon bottom and we've patched it. So now what you're going to do right over, go into the files app and we're going to go over to the internal storage, which right down there and downloads folder. And you're going to see the patched APK right there. Go ahead and click it. And you might have to give it a allow from this source and then install. And Nether SX2 was installed. Let's go ahead and open it. If you don't see it there, you can go ahead to your app screen and it's right there. Just click Nether SX2. Now just click next and next. And there's nothing that you need to change on this screen. So next. And now we come to import BIOS, and this is the same scenario as RetroArch with PS1. We need PS2 BIOS files. Once again, I have a link in the description to where I talk about this a little bit more, but I have my BIOS files inside of my SD card on a BIOS folder or in a BIOS folder. I have a PS2 and you can see here that I have a PS2 BIOS right there. Once again, link in the description where I talk about this a little bit more, but I'm gonna select that one and choose it as my BIOS, head over, go to game directories. I'm going to go to ROMs and I'm going to go to my PS2 ROMs folder, wherever that might be. There it is. And use this folder. Click next and set up complete. Now it's going to import all of my PS2 games. So we'll just wait a second. Okay. So all of my games were imported. And now what we want to do is head to the settings top left and just go over into app settings. And you can see here, there's a bunch of settings if you want, if you scroll right down, all these, you can show FPS, show speed, all of that. But I'm going to go over to graphics. And once again, the whole OpenGL Vulkan scenario is right here. It's going to be up to you on what you want to choose. For a device like this, Vulkan is most likely going to come ahead in a lot of scenarios, but OpenGL is a lot more stable. So it's going to be on a per game basis. Same thing on how much you want to upscale. Same idea on if it's going to work, it's going to be a per game basis. Scroll over to the right and you can see uh, an achievements tab and that's where you want to log in with retro achievements if you have it and make sure hardcore mode is disabled once again. But let's head back into app settings or controller settings right there. And if you go to controller settings and we go to touch screen, if we change this to none, that gets rid of the on-screen controls, so no more on-screen controls. If we go to all the way in the bottom, there's a spot here that says enable game vibration. And if you want to turn on vibrate for this device, then you can just enable that and it'll have vibration. I don't want that, so I'm going to turn it off. 
Controller port one, this is where we map the controls. And you can see right now, nothing is mapped. So if you try and load up a game, nothing's gonna work. So it's the same thing as usual. We're gonna go through and map all of our controls. Once you're done mapping all of those controls, if you scroll over to the right, you see hotkeys and you can set some hotkeys here if you want. Personally, I've been using toggle fast forward as L3 sometimes um, for games that don't use L3, but it's going to be up to you. There's some other options here up to you on whatever you want to use. But when you're done, just go ahead and hit back. And now we're on this screen, so you can just pick a game. So I'm going to pick uh, AR Tonal Eco. And it's going to load in. I'm going to give it a second because it needs to load into the actual game instead of just the BIOS. Okay, so we're into the actual game. If you click the back button on the bottom left, you can now load state, save state, do a whole bunch of stuff. However, if you click the I on the top, you can do per game settings. And if you want to change the graphics to Vulkan or upscale or anything, this is where I would do it. Per game settings with that I and all of that. If you want to change settings for every single game, it's the settings cog at the top. And now you can do that, or there's the controller icon, completely up to you. Otherwise, you can just go ahead and start playing some games. Going to click that and exit. And then we'll leave. And that's it for Nether SX2. Now, normally I would show you how to do Citra and Yuzu, but because of reasons, I can't show you where to download either of them. Uh, so if you find out where to download them, I'm gonna leave links in the description to my setup guides for both Yuzu and Citra. So you can go ahead and download and install those. But since we've installed a whole bunch of emulators, we've done everything else, the next step is to do a front end. And a front end is basically something that makes all of this come together. So instead of having to go into each emulator and load games that way, you can load up a front end and play games from it. It launches all the games for you. So let's go right ahead and install Digisho. This is going to be the front end that we're going to install for this video, and it'll be the last part of this guide to bring everything together. Open it. And now the first thing that you want to do in Digisho is download platforms. And this is basically telling Digisho, hey, we have these platforms installed or we have these games. So I'm going to scroll through and I know what games I have already. And I'm just going to go find them. I'm not going to do everything, but I know I have Dreamcast and I know I have Arcade Final Burn Neo, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, GameCube. And I'm just going to go scroll through and pick, probably going to miss some, but that's okay. I will show you how to do it. PlayStation Portable. Game Gear Genesis Master System, Saturn, PS1, PS2, Super Nintendo, and then you're going to click Import. Okay, now you're on this screen and we just imported all those games. And if you push L2 and R2, you can scroll through all of the systems that we added and you can see them all here, but there's nothing inside of them yet. First, what we want to do, push L1 and R1, or you can tap up here, and we're going to go over into the settings screen. And then go to library. And if you scroll right down, we're going to change some things. So first thing, I'm going to click clear all disjointed items on sync. Basically means if we delete a ROM, I want it to be removed from Digishow. Then I'm going to disable player warnings, because if you don't, you're going to get the killing package processes warning every time you launch something and we don't want that I'm going to show the sync icon in the top and then we're going to back out and we're going to go over into video and sounds and i don't want preview videos if you want videos then go ahead so i'm just going to turn that off that's a personal preference otherwise back right back out i'm going to go to appearance and I'm going to download a platform wallpapers pack and just make everything look nicer. So I'm going to go with uh, pop. Where is pop? Pop and download pack and confirm. 
And you'll see what this does in a second. But these are basically themes for the different systems. Once it's done downloading, just push B and B again and head right back to platforms. And now you can see it looks a lot better. We have some cool artwork and all of that sort of thing. Now, what you're going to do, and I'm not going to start with 3DS because that we don't have, but we're going to do Dreamcast. So right now, there is no Dreamcast games. If I go inside of it, empty library, it doesn't know where our Dreamcast games are. Go to Paths and then Add More. And you want to go to where your Dreamcast games are. So as usual, if you've been following my video, it's my SD card, the ROMs folder, and then I have a Dreamcast folder. And there is all of my ROMs and I'm going to click Allow. And then I'm going to click Sync. And now it's finding all of my ROMs and it's putting them all in there. So you can see them all right there. And it'll find the artwork for it and it's just going to take some time for it to find all the artwork and we can come back and see that later. Now, if I go and launch a game, it's probably not going to launch. What we have to do is tell Digishow what emulator we use for Dreamcast. So you have to click the pencil icon and scroll right down and you're going to see here that the default player is Dreamcast, well, for Dreamcast, but RetroArch64 Flycast is what it's telling Digishow to use to launch. And that is actually correct. That is the one that we are using. If you followed my video, RetroArch64, 64-bit version of RetroArch, so that's good. And Flycast Core, if you remember, we installed that as our RetroArch Core for Dreamcast. This number doesn't matter, ignore it completely, but Dreamcast is where it is. If if this wasn't correct, we're going to go back and I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go Arcade Final Burn Neo and I'm going to scroll. This one is actually correct. I'm going to leave it. Go over. Let's try Game Gear. Next. This one is correct too. We are getting lucky. This never happens. I'm going to go over. Gambate. That one's correct. Let's see if I can find one that isn't. And I'm betting if I go to PS2 and I click the pencil. This one might not be. Nope, it is. So basic idea is you want to just go through pencil icon for each platform and just double check that the default player is the emulator that you installed for that system. Otherwise, your game will not open and you'll be very sad. And then just go through. So for each system, add more, find the path. So for Final Burn Neo, mine is called FB Neo. Allow and sync. Game Gear, gonna do the same thing. And we'll fast forward at some point, but I'm just gonna do this for every single system that I have here. And we'll come back. Okay, so once you've added all of your paths, so you have games everywhere and all of that's looking great. Mine is still adding some. But once you've added them all, the easiest way to do things in here is just go into library and then launch a game that you wanna play. And that's it you'll start playing. So if I go into Game Boy and I want to play game uh, Donkey Kong, I'm in Donkey Kong. And this is using RetroArch because it's Game Boy. And if you happen to remember, we set the hotkey to exit RetroArch as L3 and start. So if I push that, we're right back into Digishow. Now, for other emulators that aren't RetroArch, like Nintendo 64, we did M64 plus FC. It's going to open it up and right into the game. And if you remember to exit, back button, exit, okay, and we're right back. And this is just the same for every single thing. Here's PS2. If we go into PS2, it's going to open up Nether SX2. It's going to launch the game for us. And you can exit, just push exit, exit game. And keep going. PSP, same thing. Right there, there, exit to menu, and exit. And that's basically all you need to know. You are set up at this point. And see, I think we found one that didn't work and I'm gonna show you why it didn't work. Let's head back to Digishow because this is broken. Yep, so RetroArch broke. This is what happens when you don't have the right core selected for Digishow. So here's Digishow and we're in PS1. Click the pencil icon. It wants to use Beetle PSX HW. 
Now, if you remember, we chose Duck Station as our core. So if you go here and we're going to scroll down to PSX and remember, the numbers don't matter at all. So go to find PSX because your numbers are not going to match mine. PSX, RetroArch 64, since that's what we have, and Swan Station. RetroArch 64, Swan, or Swan Station, right there. That is the correct one if you followed the video. Because if we click Save and go to Library, and now I click the same game, you're going to see that it's going to boot up properly because we're using the right core that we installed. So if you run into that issue where your games are not loading, that is the reason why. You don't have the right emulator selected. Let's back out of there. One last thing for Daijisho, go to Settings, go to System Settings, go to Apps, head to Default Apps and Home App, and you can set Daijisho as your home app. And you can also launch your apps from Daijisho in the Apps tab. That's where all of them are. If you push the Home button twice, it'll bring you right back to Daijisho. And I'll show you what that looks like if we go into Chrome. Push this twice, and you're right back. See? Jump into Play Store. If you hold it, brings you right back to multiple options. But now when you turn on the actual device, it's going to boot right into Daijisho and you can just use your triggers to find a game that you want to play and start playing some games. If you want to learn more about Daijisho, I have a link in the description to the entire video on Daijisho. But otherwise, you are set up and we are done. So that's going to be it for this long, long video. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow and hope you all have a good one.